It's 6.45 a.m. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The morning news edited by Danushka Madhavala, read by Saundi Tavam. Buddhists all over the world celebrate Vesak Full Moon Poe Day today. Religious programs, including still campaigns, have been organized island-wide to mark Vesak. Presidential pardon for 278 inmates on Vesak Day. A special government program for the welfare of retired war heroes. The State Minister for Urban Development and Housing says state enterprises will not be offered for private investment below the government's valuation. The Grade 5 scholarship exam will be held on the 15th of September. In foreign news, Rishi Sunak announces UK general election for the 4th of July. Buddhists all over the world celebrate Vesak Full Moon Poe Day today. Buddhists commemorate the significant events of Siddhartha Gautama's birth, enlightenment and passing away of Gautama Buddha on Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. Vesak Poe Day is especially significant for Sri Lanka as Lord Buddha visited Kalaniya at the invitation of Naga King Mani Akita of Kalaniya on Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. It is said that the arrival of Prince Vijaya and the commencement of the construction of the Ruan Valley Saya by King Dutugemunu also took place on Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. The renowned Venerable Anadathera also passed away on a Vesak Poe Day. Issuing a message for Vesak Full Moon Poe Day, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says that the Vesak Festival is a profoundly sacred day for Buddhists worldwide, commemorating the Buddha's birth, enlightenment and passing. Buddhists in Sri Lanka, along with their brethren around the globe, celebrate Vesak with deep devotion. They spend this period engaging in religious observances and venerating the Buddha with fervent devotion. At this challenging moment, we as a nation should cultivate the same great zeal for enlightenment that Buddha exemplified, inspired by his sermon to sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. We must remember the advice of Lord Buddha, Sabbata Sammanaso, to treat everyone equally and ensure we put it into practice as a country. This is the greatest offering we can present to the Buddha on this Vesak day. Regardless of race, religion, caste or political affiliation, we must all unite to heal and rebuild our country. Let us keep in mind that the primary aim of the Vesak festival is to foster spiritual growth and character development in a world rapidly advancing physically. The President wished everyone a blessed Vesak festival. The Sri the pilgrim season 2023-2024 ends with the dawn of Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. The chief incumbent of the Sri Padastana and Sanganayaka of the Sabragama province, the Venerable Bengamwe Dhammadi Nathera, told the media yesterday that the caskets of sacred relics, the statues of the god and the regalia will be taken in four processions. On Friday, to the Galpotta Villa Rajamaha Vihari and Palmadulla, the Venerable Dhammadi Nathera said the pilgrims will be permitted to visit the Sri Padastana on Vesak Full Moon Poe Day. Meanwhile, the prisons department said 278 inmates at prisons across the island will be released today in view of Vesak Festival. Celebrating the 25th anniversary of the General Assembly Resolution 54 Oblique 115, which recognized the Day of Vesak internationally, an event was co-hosted by the permanent missions of Sri Lanka and Thailand at the Ecosoc Chamber of the United Nations headquarters on the 20th of May 2024. Buddha Sasna, Religious and Cultural Affairs Ministry Secretary, Somaratna Vidhanapatirana stated that the government intends to implement strict laws against those who distort the Buddha's teachings. In response to a complaint made by the Mahanakatheras to the President regarding statements by various parties distorting the Buddhist doctrine, the government plans to enforce strict laws against such distortions, the Ministry Secretary said. He said that based on the advice of the Mahanakatheras, Preliminary work has already been done to amend the Temporalities Act currently in force to ensure its immediate effect. President Ronald Vikramasinghe announced implementation of a new program aimed at improving the living conditions of retired security forces members. The President highlighted that in the absence of a dedicated program, some veterans have faced difficult situations. Consequently, the President has directed the State Minister of Defence the Ministry of Defence and the Rana Viru Seva Authority to give special attention to this matter. President Ronald Vikramasinghe made this statement yesterday during the inauguration of the headquarters complex of the Sri Lanka Ex-Servicemen's Association, also known as the Home of Veterans, 
located at the Defence Ministry Avenue, Akuregoda Batarmulla. The President emphasised the government's commitment to the welfare of retired war heroes, announcing that those residing in war hero villages would be granted free land rights under the Urumia National Programme. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The Disaster Management Centre says that 67,865 people from 17,325 families across 13 districts have been affected by adverse weather conditions with two deaths reported. Accordingly, those in Ratnapura, Kalambo, Kagala, Anuradhapura, Kandy, Gaul, Jaffna, Kalutara, Matara, Puttalam, Kurunagala, Hambantota and Gampaha have been affected. 410 houses have been partially damaged due to the adverse weather conditions. Meanwhile, very heavy showers of about 150 mm are likely at some places in the western and Sabragama provinces and also in the Kandy and Nuorelia districts. Heavy showers above 100 mm are likely at some places in the northwestern province, also in the Mana, Gaul and Matara districts. The State Minister for Urban Development and Housing, Arundika Fernando, announced that state enterprises are now open to the private sector investments, but only at the government's assessed value. This directive aligns with President Ronald Vikramasinghe's instruction that state enterprises should not be offered for private sector investments below their assessed value. Arundika Fernando highlighted the revival of regional development projects that were previously halted due to economic difficulties. The State Minister for Urban Development and Housing, Arundika Fernando, made these comments at a press briefing held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday under the theme, A Collective Path to a Stable Country. Expressing his views further, he said that the government has granted authorization to seek investors for various enterprises falling under the purview of the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing with the aim of ensuring their systematic maintenance. This move is anticipated to facilitate transparent investment procedures for establishments like the Hilton Hotel, ultimately strengthening the financial reserves of the government, distributing shares among employees and fostering orderly management of these entities. That concludes Local News. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. The Department of Examinations announced that the Grade 5 scholarship exam will be held on the 15th of September. Applications will be called for the examination from the 27th of May until the 14th of June and came to you in the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. Moving on to Watchlight, the Marine Forecasting Division of the National Meteorological Centre has issued an advisory of rough seas and strong winds. Strong winds accompanied with heavy rainfall and very rough seas are likely over sea areas around the country and over the southeastern sea areas during the next few days. The naval and fishing communities are requested to be vigilant in this regard and came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Making headlines this morning, Rishi Sunak announces the UK general election for the 4th of July. Nikki Haley says she is voting Trump for president. And the world's most expensive feather sold at auction. Rishi Sunak has vowed to fight for every vote as he called an early UK general election for the 4th of July. The PM made the announcement in a rain-soaked speech outside 10 Downing Street as he bids to win a fifth term in office for the Conservatives. The surprise move overturned expectations of an autumn poll, which might have given the Tories a better chance of closing the gap with Labour. Sir Keir Thomas said it was time for change away from the Tory chaos. Labour has been posting large leads in national opinion polls and has insisted it has a fully organised campaign ready to go. Parliament will now be suspended on Friday before it is formally shut down on Thursday next week, ahead of an official five-week election campaign. It moves there are, It means that there are only two days to pass any outstanding legislation, a move which will mean some of the government's measures will have to be abandoned. Former Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley has said she plans to vote for Donald Trump, her former opponent and boss, in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Mrs. Haley, who once served as Mr. Trump's United Nations ambassador, was the last of his major rivals to drop out of the primary 
contest in early March. At the time, she did not endorse him, but urged him to earn the votes of the millions who had supported her. On Wednesday, in her first public remarks since leaving the race, she said, Mr. Trump has not been perfect, but that President Joe Biden has been a catastrophe. Anti-Trump Republicans' voters largely coalesced behind Mrs. Haley's presidential bid earlier this year, but her dormant candidacy is still picking up support more than two months after she left the race. She won more than 20% of the vote in at least two state primary elections over the past fortnight. A single feather of the now extinct New Zealand Huya bird has set a world record after being sold for $28,470 US dollars at an auction. The feather, initially expected to fetch up to $3,000 US dollars, broke the previous record, which was for a feather of the same species by 450%, the Webb's auction house said. The Huya bird was sacred to the Maori people. Their feathers were often worn as headpieces by chiefs and their families, and also gifted or traded. Its last confirmed sighting was in 1907, but unconfirmed sightings were reported for 20 to 30 years after that, according to the Museum of New Zealand. The Huya was a small songbird of the Wattlebird family in New Zealand, and was known for its jumping abilities and beautiful plumage, which is distinct for the white tip across the edge. The feather sold on Monday was in a wonderful condition, says Leah Morris, the head of decorative arts at Webb's auction house. Back to the headlines of the world's news, Richard Sunak announces the UK general election for the 4th of July. Nikki Haley says she is voting Trump for president. And the world's most expensive feather sold at auction. That concludes this bulletin of world news. Development News the cabinet approval has been granted to increase the salaries and allowances of more than 13,000 Grama Nidadari officers in Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the draft of the service constitution has been submitted for the approval of the Public Service Commission to establish the Sri Lanka Grama Nidadari service. That came to you in development news. Moving on with sports news. On to football, Bayern Munich are in advanced talks with Burnley over the show shock appointment of Vincent Company as their new coach. The Bundesliga side believe Company wants to join them and other two clubs are aiming to agree on a compensation fee. It is believed Company 38 would take his Claret's backroom staff with him to Munich, including former Wales international Craig Bellamy. On to rugby news, Exeter Chiefs and England's centre, Henry Slade, has been named Premiership Player of the Season 2023-2024. The 31-year-old player has been nominated alongside Northampton Saints duo Finn Smith and Courtney Laws, as well as Bath fly half Finn Russell. Emmanuel Favre Bosso, Slade's teammate at club and international level, was named Breakthrough Player of the Season. All that came to you in sports news. We take a look at business news next. Go ekatiyana youth ekatha life ke change ekatha niyam ekatha setna aswa hage na dek puri na habe karna youth ekatha niyam ekatha setna friendship ekatha menna. The all new NSB Itro Mitro account NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business news. Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. The Bank of Ceylon this week announced its decision to divest its shares in the BOC Travels Private Limited. In a filing to the Columbus Stock Exchange this week, the BOC said its board of directors has decided to divest 100% of their shareholding of BOC in BOC Travels. The services of BOC Travels include airline ticketing, visa services, outbound tours and travel insurance. That's business news. Business news. Sponsored by National Savings Bank. The safest place for your money. Go ekatiyana youth ekatha life ke change ekatha niyam ekatha setna aswa hage na dek puri na habe karna youth ekatha niyam ekatha setna friendship ekatha menna the all new NSB Itro Mitro account. NSB I am a plan for your dream. On to economic news. Sri Lanka's service exports for the month of April 2024 increased by 19.28% to reach 300.41 million US dollars over the corresponding period of 2023. Furthermore, the estimated value of ICT exports 
is expected to increase by 21.6% to 120.69 million US dollars in April 2024 when compared to April 2023. Also, the value of transport and logistics services exports is expected to increase by 24.94% in April 2024 compared to the corresponding period in the previous year. That's economic news. Weather report. The southwest monsoon conditions are gradually establishing over the island. Hence, the prevailing showery and windy conditions will continue further. Showers or thundershowers will occur at times in the western, Sabragama, central, northwestern, southern and northern provinces. Very heavy showers, about 150 mm, are likely at some places in the Sabragama province, also in the Kanti and Nuwaraelia districts. Heavy showers above 100 mm are likely at some places in the western and northwestern provinces, also in the Mana, Gaul and Martara districts. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere in the island. To conclude this bulletin of news, a recap of the headlines. Buddhists all over the world celebrate the Vesak full moon poe day today. Religious programs including silk campaigns have been organized island wide to mark Vesak. Presidential pardon for 278 inmates on Vesak day. Special government program for the welfare of retired war heroes. The state minister for urban development and housing says state enterprises will not be offered for private investment below the government's valuation. The grade 5 scholarship exam will be held on the 15th of September. And Rishi Sunak announces the UK general election for the 4th of July. With that we conclude this morning's transmission and it's back to your host this Thursday morning Dilshan to give you an all ballot Thursday this Vesak full moon poetry. A very good morning to you Dilshan and it's all yours.